place in, in South Carolina where they, they've actually reported the, the, the non-native the non hogs? That would have been in, uh, on the coast. Uh, and that came from, like I talked about, where the, we had open range and people didn't get all their pigs caught. So there were some that went feral down there. And that's where it pretty much started in the southern part of the United States. I mean, southern part of South Carolina. How are they dangerous to people who raise and regular the hogs? How is that a threat? It's the disease that they can transfer to the domestic population. It, that's the major concern. And it, you said earlier it's almost impossible to eradicate them now. Is that correct? Correct. What can be done? Uh, try to control areas where you can. Uh, and that's through the trapping that we do, and the private landowner can do also. Um, that's primarily the only way you're going to be able to, to try to contain the population. Um, the eradication is not possible at this point that I can see. How did you get involved in this whole thing? How did you get involved in wild hogs? Uh, like I said earlier, they, uh, they were doing damage to my dove fields, and they were rooting up and causing damage in my dove fields. So I got interested in how to get rid of them and uh, found a trap maker in Arkansas, bought two traps and started from there. And how can people who may have problems with this on their property, where, where is a resource they can go to look to find help? Uh, the best resource would be USDA Wildlife Services, APHIS. Uh, they're, they're tasked with uh, assisting private landowners. That would be the best contact. But these things are smart. Um, and they can be aggressive. That's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, and you, you talked about there's a lot of people in here that, that have that, that dog show people. Some of the most significant run-ins we've had on the district is with people walking their dogs out of the forest. The pigs do not like the dogs. Mm -hmm. And if the dog is off chain, if it's off leash, and it's out there running around, you're walking on one of our trails, and they stumble across some pigs, and the dog gets afraid of the pigs, what's he going to do? He's coming to you. Guess where the pigs are coming? <laughs> They're coming to you too. So we've had some of those things Those things happen. Uh, we've had some people uh, pretty injured a lot, I mean, pretty severely injured. Uh, a gentleman came in from church one night, heard his dog barking in the backyard, walked around the house, and a pig knocked him down in his backyard and cut him on his shoulder, cut him on his arm and cut him on his leg. Over a hundred and some stitches stitching back up. So they, they are, you know, there are some dangers with them. So that's just, you know, if you have them, keep that in mind. And the other thing too is if you see a car that hits one, it looks like it hit a rock. They're, the pigs are so dense that if somebody hits one with a car, it just, it, it, it's not like a deer where the deer bounces off, pigs don't bounce off. I saw a, a, a lady, she hit one down on Highway 28 below where we live in, in a van. It knocked the front wheel off her car. So if you avoid them. If you see them in the road, avoid them. Yeah. Stop and let them all go by. You know? But um, you know, those are just things to keep in mind. Is that We are very conscious of the disease that these pigs carry. Yes. And every time they do something out there, if they're handling a pig, they have gloves on. And any time I fool with a pig, I, I have gloves on. I see hunters all the time with a pig hanging up in a tree during deer season where they kill the pig, and they're down inside them like this, pulling the guts out. They got blood up to here. They got blood on the face where they've been wiping their face. And they're stupid. And I tell them that. You know, I said, these things carry diseases. You don't want what they have. They say, oh, we've been doing this for 10 years. We know we're not okay. Yeah. You know, the, the good thing about pig, a lot of people eat, a lot of people like to hunt. Um, if, you, if you eat wild pig, if you have it processed, when, it, when it's frozen, it kills 90% of all the transferable diseases in it. And, and you, get, you get rid of that other 10% when you cook it. So they are safe to eat. You know, I'm not, I don't want people to think that they're just this disease-ridden piece of meat. People do eat. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about, and I wanted to, to bring this up too, to maintain the population of wild pigs in South Carolina that we have right now, we have to eliminate 70% of them every year. 
That's impossible. It's impossible to do. So that tells me they're going to continue to increase. And when they, as they increase, they spread, their, their, their range spreads. But that's the reason we got started, because they do so much damage and they're, they, they uh, replace native wildlife. Uh, what I tell people about pigs, if you have any deer hunters in here, when a deer comes into a white oak tree that's dropping acorns, the deer walk through, pick up some acorns. Turkeys do the same thing. They pick up a few. Squirrels pick up a few. Pigs come in. They eat all the acorns. They go round and round the trees. They eat all the acorns. Then you go over and lay down. And then they wait for some more to drop. And then come back and they eat all those. So it's displacing the native wildlife by having them in the areas. Another thing that, that if anybody hunts or you have deer on your property, if the pigs move in, the deer move out. They do not cohabitate. They don't like each other. That's how, that's how I got interested in it. That's how we got to where we are now. Uh, there are a lot of options out there. Uh, we, we chose the option of trapping primarily. We do some night shooting also, but we, we try, to, try to eliminate as many as we possibly can um, by, by trapping. The one thing that, and Donna, I'd come home and I'd say, call 80 pigs today. I'd come home and say, call 30 pigs today. And she said, yeah, but there's a lot of them out there. And I said, yeah, I understand that. But if you don't do anything, it's just going to get worse. The opportunity to eliminate pigs in South Carolina is gone. That, unless a disease comes in, it takes them out. Control is not an option right now. Containment, yes, try to get them out of certain areas where they're doing damage. Um, we get phone calls from people that say they're tearing my yard up. They're rooting up my yard. They're my they, I walked out the back door and they were in my backyard. Well, if, if they're anywhere close to Forest Service, we'll go get them. And because I think that's just a uh, something that we should be doing uh, they, they have options too, but most of those options are expensive. Contractors charge up to $65 a pig to remove them. And not many people want to pay or can pay that if they have 20 pigs back there. So uh, we, we do help the public that way.